Well, let's hop into this movie now and start animating our frog character. I've explained the naming conventions that I'm using in the Layers palette, so it'll make sense as we start doing some additional inclusions in this animation sequence. I'll move to Time Frame 1, and I've already got the camera set so that it zooms in close. Now, here's a perfect example of where the sky and the hills being immune to camera movement have the same relative position in the scene even though we've zoomed the camera into the scene. I can go ahead and zoom into our work area a little bit, but I'll keep it about right there so we can see what's going on exactly with our frog. Down in the Layers palette, I'll click on the Disclosure Triangle and open our frog group up right now. You'll notice I don't have any Z-depths on this, and that's because I imported this straight off the group file that has been saved in the Working Files folder in Folder 10 for the frog. Well, for the back left leg, I'll activate that, press keyboard shortcut Z, so I can go ahead and get this bent into shape. Then we'll bring this down a little bit, move the foot out. We've got that one. Snag the right leg here, same thing. Tilt the foot up a little bit, and we'll bring this down right here. In this case, the legs won't be used for locomotion, moving around the scene. They're strictly there really for accents to emotion as it goes on. So we'll animate those, but we're going to come back and do the bone animation as one of the very last things after we get the actions palette animation done to the face and the body. Let me go ahead and scroll up a little bit so we can see the full areas of our frog right here. Now, this is a 20 second animation, 500 frames. It's a little over 20 seconds actually. This is where you can use the plus and minus symbols on the timeline. If we click on the minus symbols, the timeline compresses and we can see more seconds. Here in the very top we see now that we've got this light purple region that goes out to 500 frames. And then we also see the seconds notated very specifically with lines going down through the time frame itself. I'll go ahead and zoom back in a little bit. As viewers look at this, very seldom do you not have motion occurring on the screen for any time less than about three seconds in animations. What we'll do first at timeline one here is for the two eyes. I actually am going to open my actions palette, and bring that over here so you can see that. Move this to the side. This is where using the reference action is very important. We're going to, with the eyes highlighted, click on the eyes reference and we're going to insert a reference for that. This is where it's very important to understand the difference between insert a reference and insert a copy, something I haven't talked about until just now. The insert a reference allows you to go ahead like right now and click. It inserts a reference for that those eyes or the reference position. But if I change that action later on, every time that it has been employed or inserted throughout the entire animation, all these shapes will update accordingly in response to that. If you merely insert a copy, then you insert a one-off action, and that can be fine and very useful if you want to modify that action for additional expression. For these purposes, we'll only be using the insert reference one. So we've got our eyes inserted. For the frog head, I'm going to do the same thing and insert a head reference. For the body, I'm going to do the same thing and insert a head reference. Or I should say the body reference. And then we'll leave our legs right now because those don't have any actions applied to it. At second, or I should say right at this two second line, I'm going to go ahead and advance my timeline. I'm going to insert the same thing all over again. The reason for this is because between timeline or, or frame one and frame 48 in this case, I do not want any motion to be going on in the frog. I'm going to save that till after the two second mark. If I don't put a keyframe in right here for the reference position, then the first instance of me putting in one of my actions, like a, an eye blink or an eye move, is going to be stretched out or tweened between frame one and whatever frame I put that in. So it becomes a slow motion action. In this case, I want the eyes to look right very quickly. So at the two second point, I'm going to insert the reference positions for all these elements again. We'll come back up to eyes, eyes reference. And now, at just a short half second, 
I'm going to move the timeline and I'm going to insert on the eye level the eyes look right worried. Now when I go ahead and drag my timeline you can see that between frame 48 and the frame where I inserted the eye movement we've got some relatively quick movement which is going to be perfect for our animation. Now that we've got the eyes looking over there and I'm going to concentrate on the eyes at the moment and then I'm going to add the head motions and the mouth motions. They don't have to all coincide and that is the incredible beauty of working with pre-made actions on your character is that you can get a much more organic looking and believable types of irregularity to your animation by inserting these presets at different times so they don't always occur at the same time. Well our eyes are over here looking to the right and I'm going to want to insert the fast double blink. You'll notice that the eyelids return to their last position in that action. So now as I drag the time slider along we see we get our blink going on and it stops about right here. I'll scroll till it stops Let's see, let's go ahead and insert a blink squint. Now watch what happens. Now we get both eyes to blink closed. I'll move down the timeline just a little bit and now we're going to insert eyes look left. So now we're starting to get some pretty sophisticated motion very easily. In our next movie, we'll finish off the eyes and then the rest of the frog.